One more time, let's sing it together. morning. Isn't it great to be in the presence of the Lord this morning? Yeah. Amen. Uh, some of the leadership met over the weekend, and, I, and we, uh, uh, if I can get this to turn right, there's a scripture that really the Lord just pointed out to me that I want to read. And, uh, one of the things is about our church and our pastor here, we have a heart for family and we have a heart for community. And those are the two big themes, I think, that, that really seem to be growing and growing. And, and so think about those two themes as I read this, this passage. It's from Ephesians chapter 3. It says, For this reason I kneel before the Father, from whom every family in heaven... We're family, aren't we? This is the family of God. Have, in heaven and earth derives its name. I pray that out of his glorious riches that he may strengthen you with power through his spirit in your inner being so that Christ may dwell in your hearts through faith. And I pray that you, being rooted and established in love, may have power together with all the Lord's holy people to grasp how wide, how long, how high, how deep is the love of Christ, and to know this love that surpasses knowledge, that you may be filled to the measure of all the fullness of God. Now to him who is able to do immeasurably more than all we ask or imagine, According to his power that is at work within us, to him be the glory in the church and in Christ Jesus throughout all generations forever and ever. Father, we come before you this morning. And Lord, we want to lift up your name. We, we give thanks that you're our Father, Lord. We give thanks that you've called us to a family here. And we give thanks, Lord, that you sent your spirit to heal and to empower us and to help us to uh, go into the community of the world, Lord, to bring your love. In Jesus' name, I just ask that you be in this, uh, this time of worship. Amen. My Savior, 
my safety this Every day a brand new chance to say Jesus, you are the only way My Savior, my Savior lives Oh, we celebrate you, Lord, it's clap for the Lord We thank you that you live, Lord Ha! 
hallelujah. We sing hallelujah. 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 Your love makes me sing hallelujah. 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 Let's sing it again. Hallelujah. 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 Your love makes me sing. Hallelujah. 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 Your love makes me sing. Your love is amazing. Stand and change. Hallelujah, 
Your love makes me see. Yes, you make me see. Thank you, Lord Jesus. We bless you, Lord. We honor you, King Jesus. We worship you. Worship you, Lord. How lovely is your dwelling place, O oh Lord Almighty. My soul long and even faints for me. Oh, 
to the, uh, the first slide up there. It says, uh, I will worship you with all my heart. For some of us, this is a declaration of faith. <laughs> because we, we know that we are not at a point right now where we are worshiping the Lord with all of our heart. But for many of us, we want to get there. And so by declaring that, we're not saying we're already there. Can somebody say Amen. But we're saying this is the trajectory that we are headed. Now what this looks like on a practical everyday basis, when I say, Lord, I declare I will worship you with all of my heart, I'm reminding myself, remember the, uh, the gates? You speak something out of the mouth gate and your ear gate hears it and it comes in there and it reinforces in your mind what you're supposed to be doing and where you're supposed to be going. And you're saying, I will worship you. We bring a sacrifice of praise. Some days it's more of a sacrifice than others, isn't it? But when there's a sacrifice that comes, something dies on the altar. Something is submitted. And so when we're declaring, I will worship you with all of my heart, that looks like today I am more submitted to the will of the Father than I was yesterday. That's what a life of worship is. Something has died on the altar that wasn't dead yesterday. 
So I want you to evaluate your life, not in comparison to the person that's sitting beside you, but I want you to evaluate it based upon your progression in this area of worship. We just come through the Daniel fast. And for some of us, it reminded us how much we were controlled by something called food or by whatever, beverage or TV or media or whatever it was. And so today, are those areas of your life more submitted to the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords? Because that's, that's victory, that's worship. So I want us to just sing this another time. And I want you to, some of you declare it by faith. Some of you just thank the Lord for what he has done because you have made progress in the last two weeks, in the last six months, in the last year that you had never made that progress before. And you need to thank the Lord, it says in this song, for what the progress that he has made in your life of worship. Don't get discouraged by saying, oh my, it's not all my heart yet. Yeah, but it's more than it was yesterday, praise God. Let's sing it with that in mind. Ready to give him thanks, church. Give him thanks. Give him thanks today. Give him thanks and give him praise and glory for what he's done and what he is doing. He's the King of Kings, the Lord of Lords. The one who deserves all the thanksgiving and all the praise this morning. We give you thanks, Lord Jesus. Oh, give him more thanks today. We enter his presence with thanksgiving and his porch with praise. Oh, I'm grateful today, Lord Jesus. I'm grateful, Lord, for who you are and what you've done. Give, it thanks. Give you thanks. Give you praise today. So grateful today, Lord. So grateful. Give you thanks. Give you thanks today. Give you thanks today. We give you thanks. Now, I want, to, I want you to, to take this opportunity to turn and begin to bless the people around you, to be able to encourage them. Some people, you can look around and you can say, wow, that person is not the same person they were six months ago, and they don't even see that they've changed. And your responsibility as the brother and sister is to go and say, man, I've seen growth in you. I've seen you change. To build them up and strengthen them and tell them, you know what? You're not the same person you were. And I'm standing with you and I'm moving towards you, towards God with you, because we're going to go on this journey together. Would you begin to do that all over the place, encouraging one another?